right? Start entering your data on example two. We have two more examples to do in linear regressions. I guess my first question is, what are you going to enter in for your X? What's the first number? Zero. And then what? it goes 93, 95. So 1993 is 0. 1994, 1995 would have to be 2. Yeah. Watch out for those consecutive dates. All right. So we know that filling in our last two examples of linear regressions that 1993 is going to be zero what's 1995 going to be well 1994 would have to be one that makes 1995 two so watch out for having dates that skip this is zero two three and four entering that into your calculator practice today how to store it so the calculator will do it because we're going to do regressions all year. If you have entered our data in, and what is the next step that I would do after I enter my data? If you're not sure, remember you can look back in your notes. We highlighted those steps when we first started. Exactly. Zoom nine because we want to see the stat plot. So, zoom number nine zooms in on my stats. Okay, so we have our stats. What's the next thing that we want to do after we have our stats zoomed in on? Exactly. Very good. We want to calculate a linear regression now. We need to find the best fit line for this data. So we're going to go back to stats. Calculate at the top, arrow over. And number four. So stay with me on number four here when we go through here because this is where you store your regression equation. So you hit enter, enter, enter until your cursor is blinking next to store regression equation. All right, so we want to store the regression equation. What we've been doing is we've been going all the way through and we get A, B, and R. And then we were um, estimating our decimals, okay? These are irrational numbers that go on forever. So if I'm estimating my decimal and I use that to graph with and then I make a calculation off of that, that is less accurate than having all the decimals there. It's not going to throw us off in this class, but if it was something really important in real life that I had to be very precise on, it would make a difference there. So I am trying to store the equation, a, a y equals a plus bx, into y equals. That's what I'm trying to do. I want the calculator to store it in there instead of me manually putting it in there. So I'm looking for the y variable. That's what I'm looking for right now is the y variable. So right next to... Um, stats is right here, and then here's the vars. That means variable. I'm looking for a variable. So I'm going to go to the variable button, vars, right here. Vars. If I look at the top of the page, I am looking for the y var, the y variable. So I arrow over to the y variable. You've been on functions your entire life. You will not see parametric or polar equations until pre-calculus. So it's always a function for us. So I hit enter. And there are all the y's that are in y equals. I can store as many equations as I want and keep them in my calculator if I want. But I'm just going to say I want y1. I hit enter. Now it says store regression equation where in y1. So I hit enter, enter. And I'm still going to write down my information because on most of the problems, they want you to write down the equation in the work. All right, find an equation. So there is the question right there. Question B says, find the equation. Y equals 14.45X. And my B is 2.43 plus 2.43. And before I get off this page, I'm going to write down the correlation coefficient R. 0.96. All right, the last thing that we need to do is look at the line, and then we can make some, we can find and predict other years. So if I go to graph, there's my line already in there for me. 
I did not have to manually go and punch that in. If I looked under y equals, I would see that it's been stored in there with me with as many decimal places as I tell the calculator to have. If I scroll over, I'm eventually going to see that x, and there's the x right there, plus the second number. So we just stored a number that had a lot of decimal places. Okay, back to the graph. It says approximate the number of CD singles shipped out in 1994. So there are many different ways that you can go about finding out what 1994 is. What number, what X number is 1994? X is 1, right? Because if 95 is 2, that means 1 for 1994. 1. I'm looking for when X is 1 then. That will tell me what's going on in 1994. I can look at my table of values right here above graph. There's a table there that has all our X and Y values in it in blue. So I would hit second, and there's my table of values. It tells you what one is. What if I wanted to know, okay, so one is 16. What kind of answers do they have? One decimal place. So I'm going to say 16.9. 16.9 million CD singles chip. Let's look at the last linear regression. Go back to stats and clear out our data. 56.26, that looked better. And then we're looking for 1997. So that would be one again. Did you guys get 425.43? Perfect, thank you. So 425 hikers. And then you would graph that. I'm sure that you guys can graph just fine. Having understanding functions. So you have this worksheet to do and one more thing in your notebook for writing equations. This would be like a total overview of, of functions. I think you guys will be fine on the first side. A mapping, maybe you don't know what a mapping is. That is where that is where you're taking your numbers from your table of values and you're putting them in the mapping. Like this would be for the pattern number. And these are, um, are these triangles that we're counting? What are we counting on this? What do you think? You're counting lines, why not the triangles? because it's not a closed figure, right? It's open figure, so you'd be counting the lines. So I would say that pattern and lines, pattern one has three lines, and then you're just mapping it to it. That's what mapping means. It's the exact same thing as having a table of values, except it's a different way to look at those ordered pairs. How do I know if it's a function or not? How would I know if number um, 12 is a function? Is this a function or not? Function can't have repeating x values. And I will take questions on this homework the next time that I see you guys if you have questions. You can't have repeating x values. So I see one, three, five, seven. It's a function. What about number 14? How do I know if that's a function? Does it have any repeating x values? Well, if I pick this point on the circle and this point right above it, they would have the same x values, right? But there's another test that we do for pictures. It's called the vertical line test. 
if the vertical line crosses the function more than once, then you know that it's not a function. And another reason is because it does have those two x values. So this would not be a function. And that's basically it. Either you're looking at the x values repeating, or you're doing a vertical line test on it, and you'll know if it's a function or not. I'm open to any emails. If you email me and ask me a question, okay? Or if you wait to your next class to ask me a question. But I think that would be all that you would know from Algebra 1, remember, whether or not it was a function.